Today, I'm wanting to explain push and pop. This is a topic that tends to confuse people, understandably so. It's quite a weird one. So let's see if we can not simplify it and make it more straightforward. As always, I will leave a link in the video description to follow along with me, and I highly urge you to do so. And we're here inside the code editor. We have our two main functions, function setup and function draw, creating a canvas with window done in a width and window done in a height. So it takes up the full width and the full height. And then we say draw, we create a back background and we say strive.draw tech axes, which gives us our grid lines. Now, what I wanna do is the following. Um, before explaining push and pop, which is these two, I wanna explain why we need them, right? If we don't understand why we need something, we'll very quickly forget it. So, in order to do that, I want to draw two shapes onto the screen. I am going to draw a circle, and let's put this at, let's say, 100, 100, and let's give it a diameter of 100. And then I want to also draw a rectangle, and let's put this one at, let's say, top left corner at 100, and let's say 300, and let's make it 100 by 200. Okay, so now I have... A circle and a rectangle that's appearing on the screen and now say I wanted to change the properties right the visual properties of this I could do a lot of things right I can say okay let's change the color full yellow I could change the stroke weight right so stroke weight defines how um, thick the outline is so if I say stroke weight 10 we should get quite a thick outline around the um, circle you can see it it's in black though so let's say stroke and let's go red, okay? And now we get a different um, um, outline around both of them. We could also change some other stuff, right? We could also change like um, the scale, right? So we can say translate um, or scale this thing. So let's say I'm gonna translate my whole axis, 2020, right? And this is gonna move everything. It's gonna move my origin to 2020. So you can see it kind of moved. Let's make it a little bit clearer. We can maybe go like 100, 100, and you'll see a big difference in regards to its position, okay? So you can see how it's moving across a little bit. Let's just keep it small at like 10, 10 or something. And then finally, let's as well introduce a scale. And I'm gonna make it half as big. So I'm gonna say 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Oh, come on, there we go, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Now when this runs, we get it half the size. So all of these guys are busy setting what's called as like our canvas state. That's how you can think of it, canvas state. It says, okay, make the color of all the shapes yellow, make their stroke weight 10, make their border red, translate them all 10, 10, and scale them 0 0.5, 0 0.5. You can see both of these are affected. If I move this, right, for at least for translate and scale, then it only is gonna affect the rectangle. It doesn't affect the circle. Right, so you can see that the, cir um, the circle is regular size, but now the rectangle is half as big, right? And we can make it a little bit more clear. We go 0 0.25, 0 0.25, and now we should see the rectangle become even smaller. Now, the problem is like, okay, what if I just want to isolate these? What if I want to isolate all of these effects just to one of the shapes? Because if I drew another shape, say down here, and I say circle, and let's put this at, I don't know, um, 150, 150, and I wanted to make it 50, all of these is going to affect this circle as well. Um, I think that's it over there because we've changed our scale, right? That small circle. If I want each one of these to be isolated, that's where push and pop comes in. So what I can say is the following. I can say push where I want to start like isolating something and pop where I want to stop it. So what push does is it says, okay, save the current state. And then pop says restore the state. Oh, let me put that inside of a comment. Restore the state to whatever it was. So over here, right, before we called push and pop, all of these were set, okay? So that's what the current state is of yellow, stroke weight 10, red. So it will be saved and they will all be used here. But now any changes I make inside of here don't affect things that are outside of here. So now if I change this to full green and I say stroke, um, let's say, um, what color can we use? Let's go blue. Notice that that is only going to affect this rectangle. So we have a green rectangle with a blue outline. 
it didn't affect the circle because it's kind of isolated with this push and pop because it saved whatever the state was over here and restored it to whatever the state used to be like this. If I remove them, notice what happens to the circle. It's going to get scaled, translated, and a full and outline. There we go. You can see, right? So when we say push and pop, we isolate all of the different transformations and changes to this. Um, and this becomes useful because if we have a lot of shapes or if we're calling things inside of functions and stuff like that and it's difficult to keep a track of things, it's much easier to isolate things and call push and pop in order to um, ensure some sort of consistent behavior between, between them. Um, let's, let's show, for example, right, like this stroke weight. If we put this, it's a final example, we put push and pop around here, right? So you can have multiple pushes and multiple pops. Right now, when this is saving the current state, it's not really doing much, right? Because this is the like initial state. Okay, over here. So all of the changes here are full yellow stroke weight ten. You can see it's only applying to this circle. Um, but now, when it comes to the rectangle, we no longer have stroke weight ten, so we can see we don't have an outline. And we come to the circle, the full color that's set all the way up here is white. So it's um, it gets manipulated over here, but it gets restored. And then again, it says, okay, save it, manipulate it, and get restored. And then we do that. So that will give you a good understanding of how push and pop works and why it's useful.